Assalamu alaikum. Today we shall talk about angular momentum. We will define the angular momentum operators and we will check whether the operators are Hermitian or not. Then finally, we will talk about the commutation relation of these operators. So let's start. In classical mechanics, we define the angular momentum as this vector. Here L vector is the angular momentum, R is the position vector, and P is the momentum vector. When we define this, the order actually matters because uh, for a vector, the order is important. Now, if we write the angular momentum as components, Lx, Ly, Lz, then from this uh, cross product, we can write the components like this equation. So we have Lx equal ypz minus zpy. Now, here the order actually doesn't matter. If we write it pzy and here pyz, it doesn't matter. But if you write like this, this is easy to recognize because we started with the x component, then immediately we have y, then z. So this is just like a cyclic. So if you have a cycle and the x, y, z, you can write, if you want to write the x component, then you start with uh, y, then you have the z component of the momentum. This is what we have. So if you want to write the y component, you start with y, then you have z component of position, then you have x component of momentum. And the next term, in the next term, you uh, change the order or change the components. So this is easy to remember, and this is how it is easily written. Now, to get the operators for the quantum mechanics, we replace these variables with operator because we know that for the position operator, we write it x hat, and for the momentum operator, we write it px hat. So if we write so, we have the angular momentum operators for quantum mechanics. Here, the, the momentum operator has three components, Lx, Ly, and Lz, and they are written like this. So this is uh, y component of the position operator. This is z component of the momentum operator. Now, happily, here also the order doesn't matter because the y component of position commute with Pz. That is uh, the commutation relation between y and Pz operators is equal to zero. But if we had here, x and px together, that is important because this is not zero. This is equals i a squared. That is the uh, one component or say x component of the position operator commutes with y component and z component of the momentum operator. So this is same for all other components. So if you start with y, it commutes with pz and also it commutes with px. So here, Actually, the order doesn't matter. But again, if we write like this, we can follow the cyclic pattern, say x, y, z, and it is easy to write down. Okay, this is how we have defined now the operators. Let's check whether these operators are Hermitian or not, because whenever we have in operators in quantum mechanics, we first check whether they are Hermitian or not. Then we check the commutation relation with these operators. Now, we know that for quantum mechanics, all operator that corresponds to a physically observable quantity, that is a Hermitian operator. And we know the angular momentum operator is a Hermitian operator. So we expect that Lx will be Hermitian operator. But let's check it. So we start with Lx. So we write this like this. Now, if we put the dagger with these terms, then we will have these two terms. Now, Whenever we have the dagger with the product of operators, we know that if we want to distribute the dagger with the products, uh, with the operators, we have to uh, change their order. So here, A was at the beginning. This is A dagger at the end. So if we like to write the, that, we have to write like PZ dagger, Y dagger. Similarly, here at the second term, PY dagger, 
z dagger now uh, we know that the position operators are hermitian so we have p y x dagger equals x hat y dagger equals y hat and z dagger equals z similarly for the momentum operators also hermitian so we have px dagger equals px py dagger equals py pz dagger equals pz since uh, the position and momentum operators all are hermitian this is same they are hermitian conjugate are same uh, to these operators so if we write like that we have this equation now as i told you the z component of momentum operator commutes with the y component of the position so we can change their order so similarly here and if we do so we have like this but this is nothing but the the uh, x component of the momentum operator that is the terms inside the parenthesis here so we see from here that the momentum operators are hermitian and this is same for all three components so lx is hermitian similarly ly is hermitian lz is also hermitian now let's check the commutation relation between these two operators so if you write them uh, lx and if we start with lx and ly and write them explicitly we have these two term now from here actually if we uh, write explicitly we will have four terms like this so this one with this one we have the first term this one with uh, the uh, the second term uh, here so we have this one similarly for this we have other two terms now the thing here to check that this is y com y component of position this is z component of momentum this is x component of momentum sorry x component of position this is z component of momentum now y commutes with both x and pz similarly pz commutes with x and pz because pz pz same no so this term contributes nothing so this is equals to zero similarly this term the z commutes with z and px again py commutes with z and px so this term also contribute nothing we are left with these two terms okay here actually you can see pz do not commute with z this is why we are uh, we have this term non zero and again same thing here the z here do not commute with pz that's why we have these two term so uh, neglecting the other two terms we have this two term now we see that y commutes with uh, z and px so we can take y out we write like this and similarly px commute with both pz and the px so we have this this term actually you will have if you write it explicitly you will have four terms all three terms vanishes except this term so from this one we have this term again same is here the z commutes with x sorry uh, this x had commutes with z and py so we can take this out and also the y py commutes with x and pz we can take that up here actually what we have done we have used this relation the commutation relation between these two term and uh, a b c so these two identity we have used so if you write the explicitly from each of the term you will have four terms but all three terms vanishes except this term that's why you have this similarly from here now if we look at the commutation uh, commutator here this is the commutation relation between z and pz and we know this is equal to i h cut and this one will be minus i h cut because here the order has been changed so if we write them like this we have minus i h cut here i h cut we take i h cut out and this term we write it first then we have x py minus y pz but this is nothing but the pz or oh, sorry lz the z component of the momentum operator so with that we have this one so the commutation relation between lx and ly gives us i h cut lz and uh, if you if you do with the other two you will have say with if you start with y 
and z you will have x if you do with z and x you will have um, y now from here you can see this is also again the order cyclic order you can say if you start with uh, lx say lx then if you take ly you will have lz so any two you take orderly you will have the third one so lx and ly you have lz okay you have i s can multiply to it if you start with ly and the lz then you have the third term lx same thing here okay we see that the operators do not commute now uh, this is all orbital angular momentum but in quantum mechanics uh, we have also a spin con a spin momentum so that uh, spin angular momentum and uh, though we have de uh, derived the an orbital angular momentum lx and L ly lz from the position and momentum operators uh, with the components of the position of momentum operators but spin is not like that but spin also satisfies these equations that's why it's written as lx but it doesn't depend actually on x or something is do not have the position dependency because spin is the intrinsic property of these uh, particles like electron or something you cannot define them in terms of position or momentum but what this uh, does this spin angular momentum also satisfies these equations there are other operators also that satisfies this equation. So this is also very important in quantum mechanics. Though we start with this angular orbital momentum and we derive the, uh, these equations defining their operators in terms of position and momentum, but the spin doesn't have anything like that, but they also satisfies these equations. Okay, now we have seen that the LX, LY do not commute. This means that we cannot measure them simultaneously. So uh, this is a problem because if you have a measured LX, then you cannot know anything about LY and LZ because no two pair commutes. And now if you write it with LY, LX, this will be minus I S cat LZ, the same thing. They do not commute. Now, uh, let me show that, that they do not commute explicitly. So we start with, uh, suppose we have a wave function and uh, we psi zero, and we say that they all give the eigenvalues like uh, Lx, Ly, Lz. When you operate Lx, you, you have lambda x. When you operate Ly, you have lambda y. When you operate Lz, you have lambda z. Now, if we assume that they commute, then we can write with this, we can start with this equation. That's the first one. If we uh, operate uh, this, i h cut l z on the wave function then from the left, left side we will have here i h cut lambda psi zero on the right hand side if we do the math uh, we will have from here because uh, lx L, lambda x lambda y minus lambda y lambda x now this is because when the ly operates on psi zero, it gives us lambda y, but this is a number we can take, the, take it out. Then, and again, lx operates on psi zero, it gives lambda x. Since these are numbers, the order doesn't matter. So this is equal zero. That means we have lambda z equals zero. So we can only have a trivial solution. That is all, we can have all this when they all destroy the wave function or we have nothing, we have zero eigenvalue all the eigenvalues are zero. In that time, we can measure. That means we do not have anything actually so because the, all the eigenvalues are zero. So it means that what we have said, the, they do not uh, commute. That is, you cannot measure them simultaneously. You may remember that we had uh, the canonical uh, commutation relation with the canonical operators that they do not commute X component of position and the X component of momentum, they do not commute. So we ended up with the uncertainty principle saying that uh, we cannot measure them simultaneously. Same thing here, since LX and LY do not commute, we cannot measure them simultaneously. Now this is a problem. So what can we do? Can we have an operator 
that commutes with these uh, components of momentum operator and we can measure them simultaneously. Yes, we can have. So we define L square, that is the square of the momentum operator. This is equals Lx square plus Ly square plus Lz square. You may write it as Lx, Lx plus Ly, Ly plus Lz, Lz. Even if you put the dagger here, it doesn't matter because they are Hermitian and we know we have seen already that Lx dagger equals Lx. Sorry, I forgot the hat here. Let's say everyone should have hat. Okay, so uh, this is how we define the operator, a new operator. Let's see whether this one commutes with all the others, so components Lx, Ly, and Z or not. So we take uh, Lz. So if we write like this, so we have this one. Now, this one, of course, commute, this LZ commutes with LZ, LZ. We don't have, uh, we don't need to write this one. We can take, uh, we can get rid of this one. Then we have LX, LX and LY, LY here. So if we write them, we'll have two terms, LZ, LX, LX plus LZ, LY, LY. Now here, if we uh, use these equations that we have uh, used before, A, B, C, the common, this commutation relation, the identity of this, this is what, this is B, A, C, plus A, B, C. If we use this one, um, we have this line now, so we have here LZ, LX. Uh, we have here LZ, LX again. We have here LZ, LY. We also have here LZ, LY. Now we know that this one is equals I A scat LY. So we wrote like that. This one equals, this is uh, the order the same. So this we will have same. This is I A scat uh, LY. So we kept the order here because they do not commute. So LX was at the beginning, it is at the beginning. So then, uh, then we wrote Ly. Similarly here, Lz, Ly. So we know that if we have Ly, Lz, the commutation relation gives us I A scat Lx. So, but we have Lz, Ly here. So you will have, we will write minus I A scat Lx. That's why you have written here. And the same thing here, we have written here. Now we see with the simplification, we see that this is equal to zero. So that means L square commutes with LZ. This is same with uh, LX and uh, LY also, you can do the math. So L square commutes with all three components of momentum operator, LX, LY, LZ. So we have uh, operator uh, components for angular momentum operator, LX, LY, LZ, and they do not commute with each other, but they are Hermitian. And we have another operator, we have defined this one, but this one commutes with this. So you can measure the magnitude of the angular momentum and you can measure the uh, one other component. This is what uh, this result of this commutation relation means. So therefore, finally, we have uh, defined a three angular momentum operators, the components LX, LY, LZ. This is how, if we write it in terms of position and momentum operators like this, but if you write the explicitly what the momentum operator mean, you will have the derivatives here. Okay, and uh, we know that the position operators like as x hat is equals x, similarly y hat equals y and z hat. Actually, it doesn't uh, mean actually that. It means that whenever you operate x on a function, you just have this one, that you multiply the function with uh, x. That's why you have written like this here just saying this so we have three uh, these components and we will have another what we have defined the l square that is equals lx square plus ly square plus lz square that's all for today thank you